Our topic for today is the DNS records. In our last lesson, we looked at the DNS. If you haven't watched that video, I would recommend you to go and watch that first. In this one, we are going to focus on the authoritative name servers or mainly the information that is stored there. The information stored at the authoritative name servers is called the DNS records or the zone files. If you have ever purchased or set up a domain, there is a high chance that you might have set up the DNS records. Some of the common DNS records are the A record, C name, MX, TXG, and the NS. In this lesson, we're going to look at each of these and we'll understand what is the purpose and the usage of each of these records. So first of all, we have the A record. It stands for the address record and it refers to the IP address of the server to which this domain points. So let me take an example. Let's say that we have a domain called the roadmap.sh and here is the DNS records for this domain name. In our first column we have the type which is the A record. Then we have the name which is at. So at refers to the root domain. So roadmap.sh. Then we have the IP address of the server as a value. And then we have the TTL or time to live which is the caching time for this record in the seconds. So this means that the IP address can be cached at the client or any other places for this number of seconds. We can have an A record for a subdomain also. So in this case now app.roadmap.sh points to a different IP address. And also we can have multiple A records for a domain or a subdomain which are pointing to different servers. The next one we have is the C name record which stands for the canonical name record. It is an alias record which allows us to point a domain or a subdomain from our domain to some external domain or to one of the current domains. Let's take our existing example of roadmap.sh. Now if you look at the records, we are handling the roadmap.sh and the app.roadmap.sh. But we are not handling the request to the www.roadmap.sh. Now to handle that, we can either add another A record with the www and pointing to the IP address or we can add a C name record. So now we have that whenever the user opens www.roadmap.sh, it will find the canonical name which is roadmap.sh and return the IP address for that. Now since the roadmap.sh is the naked domain, we can point it to add also. We can also use external domains. So let's say that we have blog.roadmap.sh and we want to point it to kamranahmed.info. So now in this case, we are taking the blog as a C name and it is pointing to the external domain kamranahmed.info. The next one we have is the MX record which stands for the mail exchange record and it helps in routing the emails to the relevant servers. Let's take the same example of roadmap.sh. So I might have a MX record which looks like this. So in this case now if you look at the name we have the at or the naked domain which means that any emails which are sent to the naked domain let's say kamran at roadmap.sh they will be handled by the server at mail.example.com. Now a website might have multiple MX records. So in this case, now we have two servers handling the email sent to the naked domain. But how does it decide that which server is going to handle the request? So for that we have a priority number assigned to each of the hosts. So when an email is received, it will try to resolve it by the lowest priority number. If the server is working and it could be used for sending the email, then it will be used. Otherwise it will fall back to the next lowest priority number and use that and it will continue till it finds the server which could resolve the request. The next one we have is the txt record or the text record which allows us to assign some arbitrary text to a domain name. So for example here I have some arbitrary text record with the value set to some dummy text assigned to the domain name. Text record is mostly used by the third party services which want to verify the ownership of the domain name. So for example if you have used AWS SES for sending the emails they give you a special code to put in the text record and then they fetch it from the domain name to verify that if you actually own the website or not. And the last one we have is the NS record or the name server record which just give you the location of the authoritative name servers which is the place where the domain information is located. So for example, here is the sample NS records for a domain. As you can see, we have two NS records, ns1.example.com and ns2.example.com. There are several other types of DNS records also, but these are the ones that are most commonly used. 
For now, let's look at how to inspect the DNS records. So if you want to check the DNS records for some domain name or a website, you can either check that from the portal given to you by the place where you purchase the website, or you can also use one of the commands such as host, dig, and the NS lookup. I'll be covering host for now, but in future, I want to do a detailed video on dig, which is much more powerful than host and has a lot of options, which help us in debugging the issues with the DNS. The way you use host is you run the host and then you give it the option T with the type of DNS record that you want. For example, if I want to get the TXT record, I will give the TXT and then we give it the domain name for which we want the records. And now if we run this command in the console, it will give us all the text records associated to the domain roadmap.sh. So here I have two text records. The first one is for Google site verification and the second one is for Yandex which I'm using for the emails. Similarly, we can use it for other DNS records also. So for example, if I want to get the IP address associated to the domain roadmap.sh, I can run the host command with the type A and run this command and I will get the IP address that is given to this domain name. And with that, our lesson comes to an end. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next lesson.